This is your W40 baler. It'll come with two balls of string. Um, there's a very important thing I must tell you before you do anything. You must not operate this machine until you remove the bung at the back of the baler. Uh, I'm going to go there right now and show you what I mean. Now you can see the black oil tank here. It's a reservoir for hydraulic oil. Um, on the top you can see there's a, a steel bung. You must remove this bung. Basically when the motor is working, oil will run from this tank down inside the machine. Um, and this bung makes it airtight. This is only for transportation purposes. When it gets to you, you must remove this bung. Uh, it'll be quite tight, you might use an adjustable spanner for it. But you must remove this bung before you use the machine. It's very important, otherwise you create a vacuum in the tank and it can damage the machine. You'll find a little dipstick like this. It's a little dipstick, it'll show you how much oil is in the tank. Okay, there'll be plenty of oil, you can see it dripping. Um, but basically this, this dipstick is also a, a breather. It's got air in it, so if ever you were to lie the baler down on its back, the oil would actually slowly seep out through the hole in the cap. So it's a breather cap, but it's very, very important before you use the machine, you must change the bung and put this uh, breather cap on the top, which uh, is basically a dipstick to make sure you've got oil in it from time to time as well. Okay, now the machine, you can plug it in. You might have to change your plug in whatever country you are, but otherwise you can plug it in and you're good to At go. the moment, the plate is down. When we shut the door, Okay, when we shut the door, this little green light comes on. Um, it won't work at the moment because the plate is already down. So you have to put it on up. Okay, uh, now the plate is coming up and you can see the light is flashing, but you can hear the motor running as well. Um, if you open the door, the machine will stop. It will automatically cut out. That's a little safety feature in it. So the machine cannot work if the, any of the doors are open. Okay, so it makes it extremely safe. So I shut the door again, light comes on, and I press the button, and it keeps going up. Until it gets all the way to the top, and it'll just engage itself at the top, and it's ready to use. So the machine's, now it's at the top. If we now, if we want to open, we can open and close the door, to, to make this light come on so the power's up and it'll work. Okay, but if you want to, you see this emergency stop button? Everybody uses this. If you push that button in um, and then turn it, you can see some arrows on the button and you just turn the button the way of the arrows and it releases the emergency stop button and this light comes on and then you can start the machine again. Um, if you leave this green light on for more than 10 seconds, the light will go off. Okay, this is a power saving device. Um, yeah, basically, it works just like a kettle. When you boil your kettle, after it's boiled, the kettle goes off. This works uh, in the same way, the light stays on for 10 seconds and you have to activate the switch that you want to use within that 10 seconds. If not, to reactivate, just push that button, the emergency stop, and turn it again. Okay? Simple as that. It won't work on up because the plate is fully up already. It'll only work on auto or down. And that's what we're going to use now, we're going to use auto. But first of all, I'm going to set up the baler string. I'm going to show you how to set the twine up at the back of the baler. When you receive your baler, you're actually going to get two rolls of this baler twine. This is the baler twine that I prefer to use. Um, most baler companies actually use a baler twine, uh, a white one, a polypropylene baler twine, which goes on the back of these, on these rails here. Okay, but we don't use these. We use this string because it's an awful lot cheaper. This is agricultural baler twine, and it's, you get uh, 2,000 meters for about 30 pounds in English money, okay? All you do with your string is you literally pull it from the middle of the balls. You can put that at the back of the machine, to the side of the machine, put it wherever you want, and you see these two little holes at the back. You just poke your string through there, and once you put that string inside the baler, you don't have to do anything else with it until the, until the string actually runs out, okay? So uh, it's all set up now, it's ready to go, so we'll go to the front of the baler. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set the string up. Every time you're gonna use the baler, every time you're gonna um, set it up, this is how you would do it. You're gonna pull the string from inside the baler. You'll see the string is coming through like this. We're gonna just pull the string through. Um, you need to have enough string to go inside this groove, okay? So what we're going to do first though, first of all, it's very important, is to tie a very simple knot on this string. I'm just going to tie what I call a granny knot. 
it's just a little loop that won't slip like that okay I'm gonna do that again on here you just make a nice little loop like so and you're gonna tie a little overhand knot like that so the string is all set up uh, that's what we're gonna set up in a minute and we're gonna make it so that the string goes in that channel there and it's gonna go out the back of the machine here that's how you want it to look okay so like that it's gonna go around the outside of the baler okay right okay. So now I'm going to just shut this door, okay? Stand back a bit, stand back a bit. Okay. I'm going to shut the door, standing back a bit, maybe. And I'm going to take the string, which has got the knot tied on it, and I'm going to put that through here. And then um, you can't see it, but basically I'm putting the string back in that little channel at the back of the baler. That's all ready and good to go on that side, and this one the same. first two times you do this the string is very twisted and kinky because it's a brand new roller string so sometimes you can put a little bit of cardboard at the back of the, the slits there just to hold it in place otherwise it's uh, it's ready to go now we're going to start putting some cardboard inside the baler unfortunately the cardboard I've got is all crushed but you can put just boxes inside the baler so I just point out um, with all balers there is a small problem for small balers of actually getting the bale out of the machine and I'm going to give you a little tip here, okay? Every baler is um, tapered, if you like. The front, the front of this baler is 73 centimeters wide. At the back of the baler, inside, it's actually 68 centimeters wide. So it gets wider as it comes out. And whatever material you press inside there, it's also going to get tight on the sides as well. So you have to bear that in mind. If you've got four and a half tons of pressure going down on, on the waste material, it's going to pack it really tight inside. So what we don't want to do is wedge the, the cardboard material or plastic material really tight inside the baler. So what I propose is, and it's the same for all balers, is, is you just keep filling your baler. But when it's about half full, you'd be a bit more conscious about the, the waste touching the sides of the machine. If the top half of the bale is not touching the sides too much, um, when you tie the bale tight, you can actually pull the bale out much easier if the top half is not tight. It's like a lever, you can lever it outside. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load the baler. Unfortunately I don't have boxes, but you can put boxes straight inside the machine and you don't have to flat, them, flat pack them at all. The cardboard I'm using has just come from a mill size bale, which has had about 30 tons of pressure on it, so it's all a bit flat. So all I'm going to do now is fill up the baler. When you do fill up your baler, the best thing to do always is to put a good piece of cardboard across the bottom first. It's to make a sandwich. So the two bits of string you see inside the baler, put a good piece of cardboard across the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do first of all, is just take a good sized piece of cardboard. As you can see, that's going to fit nicely across the bottom of the baler. Now all I'm going to do is fill the baler. So I just keep putting cardboard inside until the bale is full. Then sometimes you're going to have to fold it. Boxes will just go straight inside and you can put boxes inside boxes. I always say get to know your baler. Um, the baler is very, very safe. Um, you can't really hurt yourself on it. The only thing I feel is there's a bit, it's a, this, this corner's a little bit sharp, so careful with your hands. But you'll soon realize after a couple of times of knocking your hand there that it hurts, it's metal. Okay, but otherwise, you can't really hurt yourself on the baler. Don't be afraid of it and just keep using it and you'll find the best way for you to use the baler. And the best way to get the cardboard inside. I, if I've got boxes and I want to get them in quick or I'm putting them one at a time and flattening it, I trample on them with my feet, you know, just put them all inside. As you can see, this is a very wide baler. Of all the small balers on the marketplace, I would say this one is about um, the widest baler. The reason we made it this way is I did actually work with some other companies in the past. Uh, they had uh, opening widths varying from 53 centimeters to 60 centimeters. This one is 73. And that's because we found 
places like restaurants and pubs, uh, small places, uh, they very often have these uh, very, very hard, strong boxes for vegetables. And the small balers are not usually wide enough, but this one is more than uh, capable of taking these very strong boxes that you can drop inside. So it's a brilliant size baler for, for baling your cardboard from restaurants, supermarkets, um, school, school restaurants, hotels. It's absolutely fantastic for a small baler. And of course, being a small baler, it's very good for your budget as well. It's not an expensive thing to have. Um, so I just keep filling the baler. Right, so this is all flat, already flat packed because it's come out of a mill size baler. But basically, when I shut this door, okay, and I close the door, you can see all this cardboard in here, fill it to the top. Don't be afraid to overfill it, it can take it. We close the door, it's on auto at the moment, so I just press the button there. As long as you press it within the 10 seconds, uh, then and the light's on, then you can press the button and it'll go. Now it's going to do a, a complete auto cycle. It's going to go all the way down and all the way back up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the machine for a second. I'm going to put it on down. Can you see it's on down? I'm going to restart it and by just pressing this button, turn it off, turn it on, and press the start button, it's going to go all the way down. The reason I'm sending it all the way down is you could see it was full of cardboard before. Um, now it's going to go all the way down to the bottom and uh, I'm going to show you how far the plate actually goes down. So let's have a look in a minute when it stops. Keep on going. Okay, I'm going to open the door and you can see, well it hasn't gone all the way down anymore, it's going down so far. Can you see this black and yellow line here, okay, on here, black and yellow line on there? Well that black and yellow line would actually line up somewhere on this door in a little while. Just there, you can just about see it through through the window. So when the plate is coming down, in theory, the black and yellow line, when it stops somewhere in there, when it's going down on auto, then you'll think, oh, it's it's full, or nearly full. Actually, you can't overfill this machine. It's just that you have to bear in mind for pulling the bale out at the end. Um, but you, you'll just play with the machine and get to know your baler and how much you can put in it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the plate go back up. If it was on auto, it would have gone all the way down and it would have come all the way back up again. But because it's on down, just this down, it goes down and stays down. It's, it's, um, it's got what we call an intelligent uh, relay inside here, and it actually counts the plate down and it counts it up. So now it's down, according to the machine, it won't work on down, it'll only work on up. So we put it on up to make it come back up. And just let it run the cycle till it's back up again. And again, if you open a door, the machine will stop. And you can also stop the machine by pressing the emergency stop button. And you can also stop it by turning this switch off, off as well. Okay? So it comes up. Sometimes you'll hear a squeaking noise, a squealing noise at the end of a cycle. That's just a pressure relief valve and it's very normal to hear it. So don't worry about that at all. I'll open the door and the machine is ready to put some more cardboard inside. Although it is near, now nearly full. So I'm going to put this bit of cardboard inside. As I say, unfortunately, all of our cardboard in this factory has been pressed many times. So, I haven't got any boxes to go in there today. And what you need to do always is to save one good piece of cardboard at the very end for tying the bale off. Because, like that, the string will go nicely across the top. Just put all the little bits. Don't put the bits on top if you're going to tie the bale. Put it inside somewhere like that to make a sandwich of it. Now I'm going to close the door. I'm going to put it on one more up and down cycle. Okay, so I'm going to put it on auto, just on auto there, just the auto button. Press the button and let it run a cycle. It'll do a complete cycle now. pressing it's about four tons of pressure we set these machines at before they come out of the factory it's going to give it a good press if we look down here now I don't know if you can actually see it with the camera there's uh, the pressing plate just going past the yellow I don't know if you saw that there probably not but basically when the plate goes down you'll see some yellow and black stripes stop in there you could call that full if I'm personally using the machine 
I keep filling it until I can't get any more in. But if you're going to fill it a lot, just make sure that you don't pack it tight, too tight on the sides of the baler when you're over halfway. Um, now the bale, I'm actually going to, for time, for filming purposes, I'm going to tie the bale on this. Um, what I use is a, a pair of kitchen scissors. You might use a Stanley knife or something. I don't like them, I like scissors. All I do is I fish the string out at the back like so. Okay, just fish the string out like so. And at this one as well, just catch it with the scissors. I put my string over to the front here and you've got to make sure you've got enough string to go down to the floor. Um, and again on this side, you've got to have enough string to go down to the floor. Just cut your string like that. Now ideally, if you see in here, inside the baler, ideally the cardboard would be this high when you're going to make a bale. It should be quite high and you just reach inside uh, with your hands there. So this isn't really a full bale, but it's just to show you how to make a bale. Um, what I do is I separate the string like this. Hopefully you can see that uh, the top parts of string is what's going on to the balls of string uh, by the side of the baler. These two are the ones we're going to use to tie the bale off. Okay? So you've got this string coming, it's going along the bottom of the bale, out the back, and round the top. So put this string inside. We're not going to use that. These are the ones that we're going to use to tie the baler. Okay, but tie the bale off. If you were to put this string like this through that hole, you're actually going to tie the bale to the baler, okay? You mustn't put it like that, going around the outside of the baler. It's actually got to go inside the door. Is you put this string, it's got to go inside the baler door. If ever it's tight like this one is, maybe you find it's, you just lift the cardboard up and basically you just feed it through there like that. And again on this side, exactly the same. You just feed the string through like so. So now what you'll find is, We've got a piece of string here, okay, and I like to just feed that through there like that. And again, this one, this one's going through there as well. So, in theory, this string should slip around nice like that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm going to make the pressing plate go all the way sure. down. But this time, you don't want the baler to work on auto. You want the baler to work on down, on the down position. So I'm going to put the switch to down. I'm going to close the door. When the light comes on, I'm going to press the button so it starts. Let's go back a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make sure this is nice and tight as the plate comes down. So in theory now, the bale's going to get nice and tight and the string will come through. You can see the string snacking up for me. It's coming through. There's about four tons of pressure on there and it's going to stop halfway through the cycle. Okay, so the, the bale has stopped. What I do now is to tie the string off, I pull this nice and tight, I hold that in my fingertips like that and it will stop it from slipping. Otherwise you'll find your tire loose bale. Just tie an overhand knot or any kind of knot. You can tie an overhand knot like that, or you can tie half the string in it like that. The same on this one here. Pull the string nice and tight, hold it in your fingertips. Just tie any knot that you're comfortable with. An overhand knot is a simple one to tie, and just like that. Now the bale's nice and tight inside there. What we've got to do next is we're going to put the switch to the up position, but the only way for that to work, to come up, is to open and close the door, which is a lot of hassle. So what we do is we press the emergency stop button like that, and you can see the arrows going round clockwise, turn it the way of the arrows, and the light will come on. You've got it on the up switch, press the button, and up she comes. So the plate's going to come up, and you'll actually see the strings will get nice and tight as well. So the plate is all the way up. The bale is tied nice and tight. Now we're going to look at pulling the bale out. So we open the top door. You can see your bale there is nice and tight. Strings nice and tight. We're going to open the bottom door. With the bottom door, there's actually some pressure on that bottom door. So I lean against the door a little bit. What I tend to do, stand back. I tend to stand this side and I pull the door 
I need my arm against the door. But it won't go flying open because the bail is already tight. So the bail, if you like, isn't going to push the door flying open, but there's a bit of pressure on it. As you can see, that bail isn't actually too tight in there. Um, but you can see what I mean by the actual sides of, of the bales here. Just this side here. If the top half of the bale isn't too tight on each side of the bale, bale um, if it isn't too tight, then when you come to pull it out, because it's a solid mass, it's like a lever, it's loose at the top so you can pull it out a lot easier. Um, that bale there is going to weigh about 50 kilos, that's because it's already been compacted, but normally you can make a small bale, if you do it as soon as the plate reaches the bottom, you can make a small 20-25 kilo bale, that's going to be about 50 kilos. Normally you can get 40 to 50 kilo bales out of this machine. If I'd have kept on going with what was flat packed here from the middle size, I'd probably got a six, six kilo. Normally, if you make your bale, it should come out quite easy, like that. Okay, that's uh, probably, uh, I would say, you can't lift them very well, so don't try to lift it. But that one is actually about 50 kilos or more. But that's because it was already compacted previously in a mill size baler. But you can make bales from 20 to 50 kilos for cardboard easily. 20, you can make 20 kilo bales when the plate goes down and starts coming up straight away. If, if, if the cardboard's been pressed, it'll make 20 kilos. But if you keep filling it and filling it as much as you can, I'd say 50 kilos is about what you get in cardboard. If you put in plastic in here, um, you can probably get about 80 kilo plastic bales, polythene, polythene shrink wrap, that sort of thing. Again, with the polythene shrink wrap, if you're going to put it in there, when you start loading it in there, put a good piece of polythene across the bottom, lay it out flat to make like a sandwich to hold it all together. Uh, if it's pieces, it's going to fall out otherwise. So put good, a good piece on the bottom and a good piece on the top for tying it. And again, when I said about putting cardboard in the middle of the machine, plastic, when you press it, it actually presses out in all directions as well. So when you're filling up the top half of the bale with plastic, the bottom half, just fill it, fill it, fill it, but the top half, try to, when you get your clump of plastic, put it all together tight like that, put it in the middle of the machine always, and you'll find that when you come to pull it out, it'll come out a lot easier. Um, a little bit of troubleshooting. Um, if ever something gets stuck in the baler, some cardboard, say, gets stuck in the pressing plate, when the plate's going up and down, it catches some cardboard, what you do is, let's say the, the door's shut like this, and you've got some cardboard stuck in the plate, to if you can't pull the cardboard out from, from underneath the plate, all you would do is close the door like this, switch the machine on, um, give the plate a chance to go down a little way, and then, like I said, if you open the door, as soon as this magnet loses contact, the door stops, you can actually reach the cardboard from the top. If it's not far enough down, I'll keep it on down. We can make it go down a little bit more. And then you can get anything that's been stuck, you can actually get it in from the top. And then you can pull your cardboard out from the top as well. Now, as we've emptied the machine, I'm going to bring the plate back up. So, to be sure it's going up, I'm going to put it on up. Let it go all the way up to the top. And I'm just going to reset the machine so it's ready for another bale. Very simple, nearly there. And again, when it finishes, you'll see this light. When it gets to the top, it's finished, the light goes off. In theory, if you use this machine, come on, baby, if you use this machine as a cardboard bin, okay, what you do is you keep the machine on auto all the time, and you would walk past, uh, walk past the machine, put your boxes inside, close the door, press the button, and walk away. That's all you have to do when you use the machine. In theory, you don't have to stand and operate it all the time. If it's just to bail bits of cardboard from time to time, all you do is literally just come along, open the door, put the box inside, shut the door, press the button. When it's finished in cycle, the machine will just switch off.